Okay, so we're going to uh, tie a fly I haven't tied in a little while. Um, actually, one of my favorite flies to tie, and I'm only going to be using stuff from Fly Tires Dungeon. Um, I like using these uh, Eagle Claw Heavy Wire Worm Hooks. They're easy for me to get. Um, I can get them here at my local academy. I don't have a Bass Pro or a fly shop around. Um, so this is a, a really one of my go-to flies, especially coming up in the spring with uh, the fish, the, especially the uh, smallmouth bass and some of the bigger bass. And this hook is a little big for it, but believe it or not, when they're spawning and they're chasing things off the beds, this works really well. And so we're going to tie this um, upside down, basically. We're going to tie using a bait fish cream from fly tires dungeon and then we're going to use some green from fly tires dungeon sometimes i'll add some red or orange in here for a gill um, i didn't get that stuff out um, so i haven't really thought about doing that i'll probably just take a an orange sharpie and color a little bit of this um, this fly really less is more on this fly um, you don't want a whole bunch of material you want something pretty thin, something that's going to cut through the water. Um, you're really looking for a reactionary bite. You can add some flash to it, and we might do that. Um, I've got a, my fly tying table's in a bit of disarray, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, we've been podcasting and uh, a kayak flyer podcast. Last night we tried to do a podcast and ended up having a tornado here in town, and so our podcast was really short. Um, but I thought I'd just go ahead and take a minute and jump back in here and tie up this fly. So as we tie it, it's going to be upside down. So I'm just going to take um, some thread. Uh, this is a heavier duty thread and a bright green. Uh, I'm just going to dress the hook um, and tie this in. And we're going to uh, just tie a really thin FTD fly. And I know... There are a lot of fans of Fly Tires Dungeon out there. I am a huge fan of Fly Tires Dungeon. We've actually had the Mad Scientist on the podcast. Um, I like to think of him as a, as a long distance, never met friend. Um, talk to him a lot on the phone um, and with the podcast. So we're just going to sort of dress that hook real quick. Now this part of the hook is mainly going to be exposed to this keel part. And we're just going to add in some color through here and some eye. So since we're working on the bottom of the hook, um, we're going to take some of this bait fish cream. And I like to say you only need about a half as much as you think you need. And you're going to see why. And that's probably a little bit more than I need. Um, I'll take some strands out of that. So... Right about there is what I'm going to start with. If I run if I run low, I can always add some extra. Um, that's the beautiful thing about it. And there with my eyes. So let's pick those up so we don't lose them. So then I just like to double this over. Um, and then I like to cut it again. And then I like to uh, trim my ends so that all my ends work out to be the same. Um, just grab it and, and pull it. So it's got a more natural blend to it. It's not a straight blend. I know this is probably an overkill for this fly, for this video. Um, I know a lot of folks already use this material and do this fly, but I just wanted to give a, a quick shout out on the channel for anybody that might not be on the FTD bandwagon, or maybe that hasn't tried this particular fly. And so it's right there. It's, it's going to be just past the shank of the hook. Um, we may have to do another one. I may have cut that a little thin. So we're just going to tie that on straight up and down and then just wrap it back. And we're going to do one more of these just because I think it could use a little bit more on there. Um, but it's going to lay down just like that. And I'm again, I'm probably going to go overkill on this and put a little too much on but it'll fish just fine so we're just going to take a very little bit sitting here all 
our bottom of our or the, the bottom of our fly. And then a lot of folks will go ahead and tie the green in first and then tie in. I like to sort of roll it over just so I can see a little bit better what's going on. So I like to tie in my white first. It doesn't matter however you want to do it. Um, you can do it however you like. Um, super easy fly to tie. Then I like to take a little green and this green is a mix. So I like to try and pull out a little bit of each color. And it just helps me to see what I'm doing when I tie the green in upside down because then I can see the darker green and the lighter green stacked together. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pull off a little bit of that with some lighter green and some darker green. I'm gonna trim that off. I'm gonna fold it again. I'm gonna trim that. And I'm actually gonna stack it back with the with the colors the way they were. So I've got darker on top and lighter on bottom whenever I pull these out because I want that color separation to sort of be there to look like the actual small bait fish that I'm going to be imitating. So let me just pull those out and then again you want it to be right on top right at the top of that hook and just simply wrap that in and then we're going to wrap that back over and at this point in time your fly is basically done you've got a nice little thin bodied bait fish it's going to swim hook up it's going to look really nice um, i've got a little bit of the green there for a quasi hot spot i guess you could say i'm just going to wrap that head up nice and tight because i'm going to add some eyes and super glue so i'm just going to take and quickly do one half hitch and then I'm going to lay down a hand whip finish and then another hand whip finish that may be a little bit more substantial. So it's again, there's not a real rhyme or reason to this uh, fly. It's just super, super easy to tie. So I'm just going to trim that off. So our fly is basically done at this point in time. This is what we're going to fish, but we're going to go ahead and add some eyes to that and I'm just going to use some of the glow eyes. I haven't used these before um, in the hot summer days that I'm going to be fishing. There's going to be a lot of sunlight and I'm going to be fishing this underneath logs in order to get those fish that are post spawn to come out. So I thought the glow eyes might be kind of nice on this particular fly so let me find you can tell i got my podcast stuff all over my table i need to i need to get another table so i've got the stuff for the kayak flyer podcast and kayak flyer videos and the uh, fly table all sort of separated so um, we're going to take one of these eyes and put it onto our bob bodkin here we're going to set that down and I'm going to use the brush and I've cut the brush on my super glue so that it's not totally um, as wide as it was. And then I'm going to come back through after this and I'm going to use some Loon UV to set these eyes and make a little bit of a teardrop. But we'll see that when we get there. In the meantime, we're just going to drop a happy little eye right on the side. We want that eye to ride low on that knot of thread. Because when we make our UV, we want that to cover up and be below. So you can sort of see how much we've got down here, how much we've got up here. So we're gonna do that again. Just a little dab of super glue. Right there. Just to hold that in place before we use our loon. And hopefully my loon thick is laying here handy because that's what I like to use. Um, I like to use a loon thick to fill in that hole, that gap in the bottom, and then I like to use a thin to wrap around it. So again, a uh, Fly Tires Dungeon Glow Eye. I've got it on my fingers now 
And so we're just going to set that right up there, push it down, and we're going to uh, even those up about as much as we can. So now we're going to look and see. Oh, that was not good. We're going to look and see. We have our loon flow. We need to look and see if we've got our loon thick. You know what? We've got some loon orange here. That might be that might be the way to go because that'll give us a little bit more of a gill color maybe right there where it belongs. So let's shake that up a little bit. Um, I don't see my thick laying here close. I probably put it away. Um, so I hadn't used it in a little while. I haven't tied one of these. So we're going to shake that up a little bit and, and let's see if this will work. And that is a much thicker. So we're going to add that in between that eye just to give it a hot spot maybe to get something there that the the fish can look at and see and we may be getting low on this so we're just going to drop that right on there right there just fill that up there we go so now we've got that just sort of filled in there that gives it a nice little I do like that I may do that more often it does give it a nice little hot spot right there underneath the eye and then we're gonna go ahead and hit that with our flashlight Ooh, that eye is glowing already just from that UV light that's that's pretty nice that's that uh, eight millimeter glow eye from fly tires dungeon and uh, that's that's looking pretty good so then we're going to take some of our flow and you've got to be careful on this end with the flow because you don't want it to clog that hook eye so I'm going to start on the side I'm just going to add some on the side and sort of move it around I'm going to roll around over here and I'm just going to drop some down here in this center and back over here on this eye and then I am going to spin this. We got some to drip on the table. I'm going to spin this to get it to uh, to really work around. I think that's the key when you're working with this loon flow is to really spin it around and get that to really go and even out. And then we're just going to hit it with the light and we're going to keep spinning. Um, I've tied a lot of these, I've fished a lot of these, and uh, they ride hook point up, um, so you can just sort of pull all your hair up and then lay it all back down, and it makes for a really good looking bait fish for anything that's spawning or chasing shad or little bluegill, whatever your bait fish are that you're using, this works out really well. So, hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial. Um, head on over to the Fly Kayak Flyer podcast. Head on over and uh, check us out. Uh, give us a listen. Uh, email us at kayakflyerpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks.